Well, I grew up actually in several places. So I was born in Jamaica, where I lived until I was about five years old. And then we moved to Canada, uh, lived there for about two years. And then Long Island, where we lived for about six years. And then Southern Florida. My mother remembers me uh, saying that I wanted to become a doctor when I was in middle school or in high school. There's a story about when my uncle became a PhD that I wanted to be like him and get that doctor title. So that would have been back in elementary or middle school. And I thought a lot about law or politics, but there's a direct connection that you get in medicine. I mean, what better can you do for someone than improving the health of their brain or their body? Deciding to do neurology actually came pretty late in my medical school career. I went to medical school with the intention of becoming a trauma surgeon. Someone comes in on the brink of death and you bring them essentially back to life. But uh, as I went through my medical school rotations, I saw that even when people's bodies were doing quite well, if their brains weren't, then their lives were pretty miserable and vice versa. So that interested me in uh, working in the brain and in the mind. And that's when I decided that I should perhaps do psychiatry and then I decided to do neurology because all of what happens in psychiatry sort of originates from this structure, the brain. My introduction to the brain during medical school was so exciting for me that I want to transfer that excitement to other people and if we can get kindergartners interested in the brain that's fantastic. If we can get lawyers interested in the brain that's fantastic because we know so little about it and any information we can gather from people who become interested and pursue their interests will only do us good. With a certain degree of energy, a certain degree of pioneer spirit, we can do a lot of things here that aren't done in other places. I doubt that this education program could have occurred in Atlanta or in Miami because there are certain ways of doing things in medical education and the way that we do them here doesn't really fit that. I mean, he's, he's just a great guy overall. I mean, he, you could pick up the phone, call him at any time. Um, he's, he's happy to discuss sports. He'll discuss, you know, patients. He'll discuss, you know, anything and everything. And he's so well-rounded. He really is. He's a, um, he's a true Renaissance man, I would say. You're a true asset uh, personally as a friend. Uh, you're also an asset as a physician to the community. And it's a great pleasure knowing you personally and professionally. The academic medical centers that are being developed here is critical for anyone who is in medicine here. We want to raise the overall level of medicine in Las Vegas. And no matter where it gets to, we will still want to raise it higher. Over the time period uh, that he's been working with us, approximately 140 students had an opportunity to benefit from his knowledge and expertise, particularly in the area of um, uh, brain health. Dr. Went was instrumental in helping us craft uh, a workshop for our annual economic summit and student leadership conference. The workshop was titled From High School to Medical School. And what he did was talk to us about how we get kids interested at the high school level in the career track to get into medicine. My father walked in the clinic not knowing what to expect, but as soon as he met the staff, uh, he was engaged. He could tell there were people that cared about him. And he got to meet Dr. Wint, and immediately he felt the bond, a trust with Dr. Wint. And I would not hesitate to refer anyone to Dr. Wint to change their life and their family's life. The thing that I could remember was um, when I was about three years old and you were four, I decided to cut you with a razor just to see what would happen and I think that may have been the precursor to us both going into the medical field. There is a rumor going around that I was on Jeopardy. Yes, I was on Jeopardy. I, I won one night. I, I lost the next night on a very unfair final Jeopardy question. Uh, I think a sense of humor is critical in medicine. What we do in medicine is very serious. People are entrusting us with their bodies and their brains. Um, 
And we want to take that seriously, but at the same time, uh, it's important for people to know that we're real people just like them. Congratulations, Dr. Wendt. I just want you to know that it's a privilege to work with you. Um, you're such an excellent mentor and doctor here. I really appreciate everything you do. Congratulations. Hey, Dr. Wendt, um, congratulations on your award. As your first fellow, I, I feel like I have uh, even more gratitude for what you do. Uh, you're an inspiration to me every day. The program itself uh, depends to a much greater degree on other people than it does on me. And then it's critical that uh, my family supports what I do because I spend long hours <laughs> at the office and that's time that I'm not spending uh, swimming with my daughter or uh, going out to dinner with my wife but they've been incredibly supportive of what we're trying to do for this community. I would be delighted to honor you tonight. You've done a fantastic job with the educational program. I am honored to be one of your colleagues and I celebrate you with everyone else this evening. Thank you for all you do.